The Zelda series is truly a spectacle. With more than 20 games in the series, and all of them having these really large, expansive adventure areas with stories to top them and characters remembered for years, 90% of them really don't have anything to do with one another. I mean, Zelda 2 continues the first one, obviously, and Majora's Mask continues Ocarina, according to some convoluted theory and, well, our logic. Then you have games like Wind Waker which couldn't exist in the same universe. Then there's the CDI games, but those don't count, apparently. But it's a great series. If not for the lore, then for all the games it's inspired. I mean, look at Dark Souls. That's one of my favorite RPGs of all time, and where would it be without Zelda? Anyway, trivia for Zelda has definitely been done before, but I guess I just love it too much not to do a list like this. Regardless of reason, Today, I'm going to list the top 100 things, sorry, 200 things you may not have known about the Zelda series. Because, why not? No doubt, this is going to be a long one, and will effectively remove the chance of me having to make another Legend of Zelda trivia video. Until the next one comes out, of course. I'm going to try to avoid any trivia that Did You Know Gaming has already covered. Sorry to uh, kind of contradict myself immediately, but if you're watching this, you've probably watched that already, and I don't want to sound like a broken record. Anyway, you'll be able to tell where we're at by the timestamps in the description, in case you want to skip ahead to some of your favorite games, since I'm sure you probably won't be watching the video in its entirety, assuming it's around an hour long. Anyway, before I go on too long, in case I already haven't, Let's begin the top 200 things you didn't know about The Legend of Zelda. If you put together every dungeon map, you would have a completely even grid. Whether this was intentional or not, it saves space on the cartridge and looks pretty damn cool either way. This game was originally going to be Nintendo's response to the popular Atari game titled Adventure. The dungeon that everyone loves to say is a swastika 3-1 is actually not for a couple of reasons. One, it's facing the wrong way, and two, it's a symbol for Buddhism, a manji. Ironically, it's a symbol for good fortune instead. At one point in development, they had it to where the wise sage would ask you if you wanted the sword or the boomerang, rather than just giving you a sword. I guess they realized, who the hell wants a boomerang over a sword that can shoot swords? You can open the first dungeon door by simply walking out of the dungeon and walking back in. You get to keep the extra key, too. The sprite for rupees was actually directly ripped from the game Flu Land, which used it for gold ingots instead. In one of the wise sage quotes, 10th enemy drops the bomb. It took Americans years to figure out what this meant, but they eventually concluded that if you kill 9 enemies without taking a hit, then kill the 10th with a bomb you get a bomb. The English manual to this game gets a few things wrong, but they aren't too big. The biggest one is probably fighting Dig Dogger. It says that he shrivels up when attacked, when actually you have to use the recorder and then attack him. Each of the different dungeons are all named after the shape of the dungeon itself. There's one that resembles an eagle, another a lion, and one is actually based on the moon. The recorder uses the exact same sound as the warp whistle from Mario 3. And yes, Zelda did come first. In an interview with Miyamoto, he revealed that at the start of The Legend of Zelda's development, the pieces of the Triforce were to be electronic chips, and the game was supposed to be in the past and future. As Link was the link between the both of them, that's where he gets his name from. It is possible, yet difficult, to make it to the final boss without a sword, but once you reach Ganon, unfortunately, you have to have the sword to do any damage. 
the only reason the second quest was even made is because of cartridge capacity. See, in the good old days, Nintendo hated to have leftover cartridge space, so they filled it up with even more dungeons. The start screen almost didn't have the legendary track it does in the final version. The plan was to use Bolero, a piece by Maurice Ravel. Great song, don't get me wrong, but fortunately it was still copyrighted, which led to Koji Kondo making the now worldwide famous Legend of Zelda theme. According to Hyrule Historia, a book made by Nintendo to discuss the fucked up lore of the series, and to celebrate its 25th anniversary, The Legend of Zelda takes place in a universe where adult Link from Ocarina of Time was killed by Ganondorf. This means the world is barren, and only monsters roam the land. Little to no humans remain. It's even rumored that the entrance to the first temple, a dried up tree, is the long since dead Great Deku Tree. Flashing death screen was removed in most ports of the game due to responses of seizure claims. Link's very first line is spoken in this game. He says, I found a mirror under a table. Clearly, he's speaking in first person. Zelda 2 is the black sheep of the series, having many traits unheard of and even hated by past players after the original came out. It features elements that were never brought back, such as a XP system, a Final Fantasy style world map, and a complete side-scroller experience. Zelda 2 is the only game in the series with an actual numeral in the title. In Japan, the game was called The Legend of Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. The sages in Ocarina of Time are named after the towns of this game. Well, going by the lore, it's actually the other way around. to the past intro. Anyway, the catfish in the Swamp of Ill Omen that gives Link the Earthquake Medallion is based on a catfish from 18th century Japanese folklore. Namazu, a catfish that would wiggle its body in the water and bring chaos and destruction, was pinned in his prison of stones similar to how he is in the actual game. In the Western Releases Instruction Manual, Ganondorf is given the last name Dragmire, this was a result of Nintendo of America's translation team wanting to make their own contribution to the story. It's possible to deflect Aghanim's projectiles using the bug catching net. Many use it instead, seeing as how it has a larger range, supposedly. The Great Aghanim, defeated, essentially, by a thing that catches butterflies. After Ganon has been defeated and the staircase to the Triforce has appeared, it's still possible to fall in the holes that surround the arena during the fight. And yes, you'll have to restart the entire fight. In the Swamp of Evil, there are three enemies that don't load properly, making them invisible. They can still attack and be killed, though they'll remain unseen by you. Many hypothesize that this isn't a glitch and they're legitimate characters. Miyamoto had originally planned for A Link to the Past to have a party system where you could switch between three characters and utilize their individual abilities. The characters would have been a mix between an elf and a fighter, presumably Link, a sorcerer, and a girl. There's an unused item called the Letter that uses the same sprite as the map from the original Legend of Zelda. Its purpose, unfortunately, is unknown. Concept art for A Link to the Past shows Zelda in futuristic clothing. This art is proof that Nintendo reconsidered using the futuristic aspect for A Link to the Past. An unused enemy soldier with a cannon that shoots spikes is in the game's files and is fully functional but never used. He has full AI, graphics, and animations. It's said he inspired a later boss.
Princess Zelda is not featured at all in Link's Awakening, though she is mentioned to by Link. In the first shop, Link can steal an item and sneak it past the shopkeeper and get it for free. Your name will be changed to Thief if you do this, and when you return to the shop, the shopkeeper will kill you with a giant beam, calling it the ultimate price for some reason. There's an additional scene after the credits, only viewable by attaining no deaths in your playthrough. It is very possible to complete Link's Awakening without ever acquiring the bow. Some don't even acknowledge it. Doing so requires that you get the boomerang, however. If you equip the bow and the bomb, then press the bow and bomb button at the same time, you'll shoot an arrow with a bomb attached. It's unknown if this is a glitch or not, as it's never been confirmed nor denied by the developers. The Color Dungeon and the Director's Cut re-release is the only location in the game where green rupees are found. For some reason, they're worth 5 rupees each, while blue ones are only worth 1, a flip-flop. When you hit a cucko, Marin gets angry at you, but if you hit one too many times, Marin will change her attitude and tell you to keep attacking it. These are clinically proven traits of a psychopath. In the German version of the game, entering Link's name as M-O-Y-S-E will change the background music. The code refers to Claude Moyes, a famous German translator. Richard is likely based on the main character for the game For the Frog the Bell Tolls. This is evident in his home, the music that plays is a remixed version of the main theme from his game, and the frogs hopping around his villa are a reference to the gameplay in said game. There's an enemy titled Anti-Kirby, and what do you know? He's based off of... Kirby! Mr. Wright is based on an advisor in the original Sim City who had identical hair, glasses, and, well, the name. The theme that plays in his house is also the same one. In issues 44 and 48 of Nintendo Power, there are early screenshots from a pre-release copy of Link's Awakening, showing that the wind marimba was originally a pair of symbols. Mr. Wright shows Link a picture of Princess Peach sent to him unknowingly by the goat in Animal Village. The scene makes fun of long-distance relationships involving male and female. The goat is lying about who she really is. versions of Ocarina of Time, the shooting gallery minigame had more things Link could shoot instead of just, well, rupees. Footage shows Link shooting bombs and other targets, which unfortunately didn't make it into the final cut of the game. Dark Link mimics almost every aspect of Link. His actions, his defenses, uh, hell, he even has the same amount of health as him. So. That means if you only have four or five hearts by the time you go to fight him, he can become one of the easiest bosses in the game. According to an interview with Miyamoto while the game was still in development, Navi was originally intended to have romantic feelings for Link and was even jealous of Princess Zelda. Though it seems these details were left out of the final game, I don't know about you, but it sounds like a pretty bad fanfiction to me. The owl that follows Link around everywhere, yes, everywhere, 
throughout his quest is actually the light sage Raru, who's taking the embodiment and shape of an owl. I guess Raru, god of long speeches about exposition and tutorials, just doesn't sound as cool, huh? Epona actually began as an idea discussed during development of Super Mario 64. While never included in the game, the developers knew they would need a horse for Ocarina of Time, and planned it from the very beginning. It's funny how you can't even imagine Mario riding a horse, but Mario riding a dinosaur with orange boots is way more normal. A glitch called the Wrong Warp Glitch can be used to teleport players from the Deku Tree basement to Ganon's Tower, as well as several other locations. This game is one of the game-breaking ones that speedrunners love to use. During early development, Stalfos had less armor and a different sword and shield. You can also see that there's a few differences in the game's button icons as well. It was planned for the Great Fairy to be blue and white. The beta model can still be found in the game's data. The baseline for the Song of Storms sounds very similar to the baseline from the castle theme from Super Mario World 2. Link was originally able to ride Epona into Hyrule Castle Town. This can be seen in various pre-release builds. Why it got taken out really isn't known. Changing tunics and using certain items while next to a Garuda warrior can alter the color of the warrior's clothing to match a color value of an item currently equipped to Link. As you may have seen earlier, when the game was in later beta stages, the buttons had different functions compared to the final release. The A and B buttons were swapped. It is possible to use an empty bottle to reflect Ganondorf's magic blasts back at him. Like the bug catching net, there are certain advantages to using it. It has a slightly wider swipe, just like the net. <laughs> After killing a Redead, any other Redeads near it will flock around it and sit. It's speculated that they're either mourning their loss of their friend, or they're eating the dead body. The character Seikon can be seen running around Hyrule Town Marketplace. He'll say, Huff Huff, I'm late, I'm late, for a very important date. A quote from the White Rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. In an early beta version of the game, there is a place known as the Unicorn Fountain. This was originally going to be where Link was able to get the Triforce and shoot beans from his sword. It's believed that it could be found in the underwater cave in Zora's domain. The game features a crash debugging tool that allowed the developers to find out why the game crashed. In all the N64 releases, the information screen says, I love you. Charles Martinet, the man who voiced Mario, once expressed interest in providing the voice of Link. Mr. Miyamoto unfortunately told him that Link will not have a voice. And I have to agree with him, considering Link spans across many universes, and the last time Link had a voice didn't go so well. Hey! Excuse you! Here. I'm deeply sorry about that. Anyway, in some beta builds for the game, it's clearly heard that both Link and Navi have different voice actors. In the Hyrule Castle courtyard, there's a window to the left. If you shoot said window with a slingshot, a guard will appear and say, Hey you, don't cause any trouble. He'll throw a bomb at you too. Doesn't he know Zelda's like feet away from there? In the Master Quest version of the game, you should have an extra key by the time you get to the end of the Water Temple. Thankfully, this was fixed in the 3DS version, but it caused much fan speculation that there may be some sort of hidden room in the Water Temple in the Master Quest version. 
Unfortunately, no developer has ever fessed up to any such thing, and it's just generally been accepted as a developer mess up. There's actually a time paradox in this game. According to Guru Guru in Kakario Village, you play the Song of Storms as a child to speed up the windmill. Yet, Link is taught the song by Guru Guru as an adult, which causes confusion over who actually made the song. The water medallion was actually meant to be the ice medallion. Proof can be found during the Sorcerer's Sisters fight with Kotake and Kome. Kotake has the fire symbol medallion, and Kume has the ice, which has the same design as the water medallion. In Link's house, there's a picture showing him fighting a monster, along with a fairy. Due to the fact that it looks like a dinosaur, fans speculate that it's King Dodongo. By using Game Shark codes, you can see a few cutscenes that were originally going to be in the game. This is a cutscene that takes place in the Temple of Time, after each spiritual stone is collected. In some early versions of the game, red blood can be seen on multiple occasions, one of which being when Ganon coughs it up. The color was changed to green in later versions. I see they kept the dark undertones, though. Epona's name, when translated from Gaulish, means Great Mare, and is the Celtic god of horses, donkeys, and mules. According to an interview with one of the main directors in the 225th issue of Nintendo Power, the battle against Ganon was supposed to have him be two stories tall. Unfortunately, the Nintendo 64 was unable to render something like that. The music for the Fire Temple once had chanting as part of the background music. The chanting apparently resembled an Islamic prayer, and Nintendo changed it, regardless of no one asking them to. At the bottom of the pool inside the Lakeside Laboratory, you can find a still shark behind a set of bars. Talon and Ingo are based on Mario and Luigi from the Mario Brothers series. Players joke about this without even knowing that it's true. At the fishing hole, you can catch the shop owner's head if you're precise enough. Then, if you go talk to him, he'll naturally ask you to give it back. Of course, being the evil bastard that you are, you can always say no. Link can be a really horrible person sometimes. After gathering the three spiritual stones and getting the Ocarina of Time, if you go to the back alley in Hyrule Castle Town, you'll find a wounded soldier. If you talk to him, he'll basically tell you exposition, and then fall silent. Then, if you try to interact with him once more, it'll say he's not moving anymore. Meaning that this is one of the few characters who actually dies in the series and isn't just defeated. The Iron Knuckles are actually Gerudo thieves just in armor. Removing the chest plate reveals a feminine figure, and all Gerudo are female anyway. After cutting down a sign with your sword, you can play Zelda's lullaby near the sign to repair it. Once the song's finished, the sign will miraculously heal itself.
During beta testing, developers added an R-Wing to the game, supposedly to test enemy AI and the Z-targeting. What you're about to see is in fact in the game, and cheated in through GameShark, but is originally in the game's files. <laughs> The Stone of Agony and the Goron's Bracelet incidentally both carry over to Majora's Mask. Their effects can still be used, but you can't see them in your inventory or on Link's wrist. Seikon is the first NPC who can be brutally murdered by Link. If you hit the bomb bag he steals with an arrow, hookshot, or bomb, it will explode, killing Seikon. I suppose Link's been playing too much Dark Souls. The flow of time in the first 3 day cycle as Deku scrub Link is 1.66 times faster than normal. It's possible that the character of the Happy Mask Salesman is based on Miyamoto. The mask representing Mario that he carries could be a reference since Miyamoto created the Mario series. Their smiles are similar as well. and. How else does he know all this about the masks? It's a curious thing. Very rarely, Majora's Incarnation, the final boss, sometimes hums the melody to the Death Mountain Dungeon from the first Legend of Zelda. After Cafe gives Link the Pendant of Memories, he tells Link to keep it a secret to everybody, a reference to the quote from the original Legend of Zelda. During early trailers of the game, Zora, Deku, and Goron Link all had their instrument icons instead of the ocarina. It's unknown why this feature went unused, but it's used in the 3D version. After playing the Song of Soaring, the map that displays locations you can travel to comes up. The location of Southern Swamp and Windfall are both displayed incorrectly. Two screenshots found on the game's Japanese website show Link fighting Skull Kid on top of the clock tower during the day, which is completely impossible without glitches. The three-day system was supposedly going to be a week, but IG Anuma, the game's director, thought that the player would be annoyed having to go through an entire week again, and it'd be hard to remember what happens each day. There's masks that have been found within the game's data, likely supposed to have been worn by Skull Kid. They're surreal and all look like Link, each rotated differently to be used in different scenarios. The postman in town, who wants to flee but can't find time for it in his schedule, shows similarity to one of the couriers from a short story written by Franz Kafka. On the file select screen, if you push start, hold up, push A, and then push B twice, an alternate opening demo will play. Also, if you stand in the garden outside of the Astro Observatory and turn a field, when the tower opens up on the third day, a different cutscene will play that shows the tower opening as if looking towards the clock tower from the observatory. Each piece of music in Zora Hall is taken from a previous game in the series. This includes music from Ocarina of Time, the cave theme from A Link to the Past, and the dungeon theme from the original Legend of Zelda. If you take Keaton's quiz, when you answer a question, a sound will trigger, signaling whether the answer is right or not. Picking the right answer will trigger a sound from the game Excite Bike on the NES.
through action replay, it is possible to use Sunsong from Ocarina of Time. Sunsong fast forwards time to the next day, if you could remember. This, however, creates one of the most terrifying scenes I've ever seen in a Zelda game. Beware. An impression of Skull Kid can be seen in the grass when you're looking towards the south entrance of Clocktown from the Astral Observatory telescope. For some reason, in the Magic Hag's potion shop, Kotake is standing on a box of lemons in order to reach over the counter. Can't she fly or what? Majora's Mask was planned for release on the IQ player, which was basically the Chinese version of the N64. It's theorized that the game's dark undertones and imagery were deemed too violent to pass Chinese censorship laws. The instruction booklet mentions Termina as some sort of paralleled version of Hyrule. All four dungeons relate to the bow and arrow. Woodfall Temple features the bow itself, Snowhead has the fire arrows, Great Bay has the ice arrows, and Stone Temple has the light arrows. And unfortunately, that's all there is for now. Be sure to check back soon for part 2, which features Twilight Princess, Skyward Sword, and more. <laughs>